Hi there, welcome to my channel. This is my first video. I decided that since we're spending a lot more time indoors at home, I would finally get started on my own fragrance channel and show a little bit about my collection and the fragrances I've been picking up recently. I've been an avid fragrance and perfume lover for over a decade. I've been collecting for a very, very long time now. I love fragrance and recently I've been watching a lot of videos by three channels, The Scented, Sarah Mays, and Melissa Jean. And all three of them really inspired me to show a little bit about my own collection. And recently I've got a nice collection, a nice haul um, of niche fragrances that I've picked up recently. So I'm going to share a little bit about each one with you. Starting with Sunshine by Amouage. This is one that's talked about so many times on YouTube. I've been hearing about it for well over a year now and about two months ago I actually smelt it in a airport, in the Munich airport, and I fell in love. I knew I loved it and then I waited about a month and a half, two months to actually pick it up and I'm so glad that I have. This is the only one out of the haul here today that I actually smelled before. It's not a blind buy and it comes in this really beautiful box. I'm not one to really care to keep boxes or care for the packaging that they come in, but this box is really beautiful and all the homage boxes are stunning. They're really, really well made, so I'll definitely keep this particular box, but the fragrance is like nothing I've ever smelled before. So many YouTubers said that to them it smells like an apricot dessert or an apricot pastry. And honestly, for me, I don't get that. But what I do get a lot of is that white tobacco. And what's interesting is I have a lot of fragrances where I've smelt tobacco, but usually it's a darker, richer tobacco. And this really does smell like white tobacco. It's light while still being smoky. I definitely get some fruitiness, I think, and some floral, some osmanthus, I think, in there. But mainly I get that nice, nice white tobacco. And it's interesting how it can have sweet floral and and that kind of dark tobacco smell. And yet it's all of those things and none of those things. It smells like nothing I have in my collection or nothing I've smelled before. And that's really, really rare for someone who has so many perfumes and has been loving perfume for as long as I have. I will continue to buy this for the rest of my life whenever I run out. It's an incredible fragrance. It's beast mode to the max. I wore it on a 10 hour flight, washed that sweater that I was wearing it on, and the next day I could still smell it on the collar. So I'm washed by sunshine, absolutely recommend it. And it was a great, great buy. Secondly, another fragrance that's talked about a lot on YouTube, YouTube definitely made me buy it, is Delina by Parfume de Marly. And this one was another one where people were adamant about how unique it was and how interesting it was. And the box for this one's actually quite pretty as well. This is the box and it just sits on that podium there. Um, and this one, right when I smelt it, it is unique in that I don't have any other perfumes that smell like this or that I've smelt um, in stores, but it does remind me a lot of that American Cream Conditioner by Lush. I don't know if you've ever had the chance to use that or smell that. But immediately it really, really reminded me of that conditioner, which isn't a bad thing. It's a nice smell. It's a very strawberries and cream smell, even though this fragrance doesn't list strawberries and cream as part of its notes. But when you do smell it right at the top, it is kind of tart. That, that lychee, that rhubarb, you really get that in the opening and it's quite nice. And then you get that rose and that musk. And as it, as it lays on your skin and as you get the heart notes and the dry down, it becomes this really soft, floral, musky, girly fragrance. It's a fragrance that very much matches the bottle. It's girly, it's youthful. I mean, anyone can wear anything they want at any age for any gender, but this is very girly, it's very feminine. It's not surprising that a lot of women decide to wear this on their wedding day or when they get engaged. It's just super youthful and super fem feminine, and I'm glad to have picked it up. I would like to try more of the range. I'm interested in Athalia. That would be another blind buy. So if you have any recommendations for the line of Parfum de Marly, definitely let me know. Then for my third one from the house of Maison Francis Crudigeon, I picked up Feminin Pluriel. I 
had smelled Baccarat Rouge 540, which is the one most people know this line for, uh, about a year ago, and I like it, and eventually I'll probably pick it up as well, but this one I'd never smelt before, and it's lovely. I'd watched a little short clip of Francis Corrigan actually speaking about how when he made this, he wanted it to encompass kind of the idea that a woman could be many things, hence pluriel, but I definitely get that. If you don't like florals, you will not like this. This has so many flowers. I smell rose, iris, violet, lily of the valley. Like I, I get so many florals all at once and yet there's this freshness that carries out throughout. I mean, it's in the opening, it's in the heart and in the base. I don't know what note or combination that makes it smell almost like a watery floral, but I love it. I love this one. It's a one that you can definitely wear right out of the shower because it's so fresh in the same way that it's in the same way that it's floral but i love it and if you love florals definitely check out feminine pluriel fourthly i decided to get into some Zerjoff fragrances and so i picked up three i never owned any and these boxes again i have to say for not being a box lover are beautiful so the first one i picked up right over here is dama blanca and this is the box, and the boxes just kind of slide out through like this. And this one people had recommended to me because I love powdery fr fragrances, I love powdery perfumes. And this one's quite, I do have to spray this one to get it really good. It is powdery. It is also slightly citrusy, and then you get that nice floral. You do get the violet. I love violet fragrances, it's probably my favorite note or top three. You do get violet, but it's, you get that citrus. It's very fresh. It's a really, really good fragrance for spring and summer. I've worn it once or twice. I really like it. It lasts a fairly long time, not as long as Amouage Sunshine, but definitely you get like a good five hours before it starts getting into just being kind of more of a skin scent. And for a light floral fragrance that has that citrus kick, I think it's really nice. So that is Dama Blanca. Then I picked up one that was highly recommended, probably the most recommended from this Casa Marati line, and that's Lyra. And this is the box. People really love this one. And it's one, I have to admit, I wasn't really thinking I would love because of the notes, but I wanted to try it out and I love it. I actually really do like it. You get that blood orange right off the bat and then it's quite warm. You get cinnamon and vanilla and caramel and it's very, very great, I can imagine, for fall, winter. Around October, November, I can see this being really nice to wear. It's very warm, it's an extreme gourmand, so if you're a gourmand lover and you love vanilla and caramel and cinnamon and those kinds of slight, slightly spicy warm smells, it's great. But I wore it once and I liked it, I just think I'll really like it a lot more in fall. Then finally the last of the Custom Rati line is actually my favorite, and this is the box. It's La Tosca, and this one is a Violet Lover's dream. I love this one. And this is the bottle. It's a beautiful purple. This one is stunning. It really reminds me a lot of Insolence by Guerlain, which is another fragrance I have. I don't have the bottle here with me, but right when you smell it, you do get a little bit of that violet um, and that powderiness. But I would say that Insolence by Guerlain is very candied. It's a candied violet. It's sugary. It's very, very sweet, almost for some people sickly sweet, but I love it. This one, you get, I think there might be some lime in here. You get a little bit of citrus, very, very light, and it's much more of a truer violet, a more floral vi violet, a more fresh violet, and it doesn't have that candiedness. So if you like violet, but you don't like it when it's candied or sweet, like an in insulins, definitely check out La Tosca. If you're like me and you like violet in all of its forms, I'd still recommend it. I love this one and it's great. I think year round, but definitely spring, summer. And then two more left. 
I got a fragrance from the House of Oud collection. This is another one where it rests on a podium. Um, and I'd never owned anything by House of Oud. I got Almond Harmony, which is this one right here. It's this really, really nice heavy base. And then you take it out and it's kind of a painted glass. This one, right as you take it out, you can smell it. It's quite strong. Almond Harmony is very, very high on almond. It's it's an extreme almond, kind of like a marzipan, candied, sugary, very sickly sweet, like make your teeth hurt sweet. I love it, but I can see how this line I know isn't a line that people really like. A lot of people don't like this line, and I can understand by looking at the bottles, you think it, they're going to be really rich and oody and deep. And in my experience, they're not. They're very, very sugary and sweet and synthetic, honestly, but synthetic in a good way, in a way that I still enjoy. This one is very, very strong on the almond. You get some florals, you get some sweetness, definitely in some vanilla, but I love it. I think it would be a lot better in colder months so you don't kind of choke yourself or the people around you because you can do that definitely on clothing. It's quite strong. But otherwise, I really love Almond Harmony and I will continue to wear it. And I'd like to try out the rest of the line a little bit more as well. And finally, uh, you have to eventually reach a dud in every one of your hauls, at least I do, especially if you're blind buying, which I don't recommend, but I often do. And it's actually a Creed fragrance. It's my first Creed fragrance and it's in the Les Royales exclusive line and it's Jardin d'Amalfi. So the gardens of the Amalfi Coast. I knew it was gonna be citrusy and floral. I do have to spray this one a little to actually smell it. But I underestimated the, the citrus in this one. It is so citrusy. And there's a lot of citrus in there. There's bergamot, there's lemon, there's lime, there's orange, there's mandarin before you even get to the florals. But on me, the only citrus I really get is lemon and it's a strong lemon. It's sour in the way that it can make your mouth water. It's sour in a Lysol detergently kind of way sometimes. It smells quite synthetic lemon, um, which is unfortunate because it is Creed, so it's not as if it's an inexpensive brand. It's a niche brand and I don't like it. It's not one that I've enjoyed. I've tried to wear it twice now. If you have this and you find that you have got a good combination on how to kind of layer it with a sweeter or more floral fragrance. I still have to try to do that. I'm having difficulty wearing this one for sure. I'm glad it's a smaller 30 ml bottle because the lemon in this is just so, so strong and in an uncomfortable way, definitely. But that's my haul for here today. Um, if you have any recommendations on other videos you'd like to see from me or any other hauls, um, any tags that you'd like to tag me in, definitely let me know, and I'll see you next time. Bye!